All right, this is going to be an explanation of how the GoPro trail camera with wireless light system operates. First thing we have is the uh, GoPro trail camera unit itself. And the GoPro is mounted at the lower part of the case. Uh, the control board with the Fresnel lens is mounted up top. On the bottom of the case, there's a uh, external microphone for your audio. And then on the uh, other side, on the bottom of the case, there's a uh, light sensor that uh, detects the light level to let the control board know if it's daytime or nighttime. All right. So inside the build case, open this up. And like I said, your GoPro is here, and it is housed in one of the uh, GoPro waterproof uh, cases. Uh, just so it can keep the camera positioned properly. Alright, and the GoPro is connected with a bus port connector uh, on the back of the camera, and that is connected to the control board, and that operates uh, the camera to turn it on and off. Alright, above the GoPro, there's a Pawn wireless flash trigger uh, transmitter, and what this does is sends a signal to the uh, light at night for it to come on when the camera is recording video. Um, you can use uh, multiple lights with each camera setup, um, two preferably uh, at least, and you can put as many as you want to really, uh, but each light will have to have a receiver inside that re receives a signal from the transmitter. All right, the transmitter power is um, coming from the three AA batteries that also power the control board. On an on and off switch here um, that turns power on to the uh, control board. <clears throat> and the transmitter is wired directly to the three AA's so it has continuous power all the time, but it is not powered on all the time. The control board actually um, turns power on to this transmitter when it is needed, uh, so it can turn the lights on for you. All right, and then over on this side of the case, there's uh, two three-bay AA battery holders that are wired in parallel, and these are for external battery power for your camera to keep it running longer in the field. You can use uh, just three or you can use all six and um, recommended that you use rechargeable AA batteries for the camera external power. Um, you can use also uh, rechargeable AA's here to power the control board or you can use alkaline um, batteries. Um, on this side, I have a, a dip switch setting, so you can uh, set the dip switches on the control board uh, if you want it for 24-hour operation, which would shoot video night and day. Um, you can set the dip switches for a one-minute video length or a 30-second video length, or if you just want to uh, get videos during the day, um, then there's also uh, settings for that. And just change the dip switches on the control board to match what it says on this label over here. All right. Now the way this works is when you first power on the control board, um, it's going to turn on your transmitter as well. Um, let me back up just a moment um, to ensure that the transmitter is going to operate properly. Whenever you first put batteries in this uh, holder up here, or any time you change batteries in there, you need to power on the transmitter and make sure it is set to uh, the proper setting, which would be B. And I'm going to go ahead and power this on by pushing the on and off button. And you'll see that B is lit up. If yours is not, then you can press the on and off and it will toggle through uh, the different LED settings and you need to make sure that it is, B is lit up and then once that is done 
you can uh, hold the uh, on and off button B will light up and then the LED up top here will flash several times and that shows you that the transmitter is now powered off um, that way the transmitter is not on all the time and, and using battery power that isn't needed all right now before I get into actually turning this on um, I'm going to show you the light case all right now this is a light uh, this is an 18 watt floodlight that is mounted to the front of a Pelican 1040 case and inside this case we have the receiver unit which is up top and then four 18650 batteries that provides power to the light and the light is a 12 volt system but it can handle you know up to 18 volts I believe and then you got two uh, 18650 batteries down here and these provide power to the receiver all right this is a relay board that uh, is used to uh, convert the signal from your receiver to turn the uh, light on and off okay um, when you set this up out in the field first thing you need to do is go ahead and turn the uh, switch on the receiver to the on position and when you do that the LED is going to light up and then it will continuously flash and that lets you know that the receiver is on and ready to operate okay whenever you're going to take it out of the field um, just power the uh, receiver off by sliding the switch back down to the off position and that way it isn't continuously draining power from your two uh, 18650s down here all right so we've got our receiver on and the light would be ready to set up now both the camera and the uh, lights are mounted with a uh, pipe through system which is right here uh, you'll notice that also in the uh, camera case uh, that's a uh, half inch CPVC pipe that will allow you to run a um, length of cording or um, a python locking cable through there uh, if you needed security you know where you could lock it up onto a tree or a post or whatever but um, you could run that through that pipe through and then attach it to your tree or post um, to hold it in position where you want it uh, if you're going to use um, cording or even a python locking cable you don't want to just cinch this thing down to where it's just really tight um, because you run a risk of kind of warping the case and possibly water intrusion getting inside and messing up your electronics and stuff so you just want it snug enough to hold it in position without really uh, cinching it down really really tight all right so my light is on at the moment and I'm going to lay it on the side here so possibly you can see that it will come on whenever we turn this control board on now like I said once you've got uh, your transmitter set up you know where it's uh, showing B um, and then you've got it powered back off you need to also make sure that the camera is off you know it's not on and recording but uh, it needs to be set for one button mode operation which uh, would mean that the uh, whenever the power mode button is pressed on the camera that it will automatically start taking video whenever the camera powers up all right but um, initially whenever we turn this switch on the control board is going to go through a warm-up phase where it's going to turn on the light for about eight to ten seconds and that's just so that you can see that the lights are actually working you know and know that they're working before you leave it in the field and uh, once that is finished the light will go back off the uh, transmitter will be powered off and then the board will go through uh, what's known as a walk test and um, if you were to walk in front of the Fresnel lens you know it would detect the motion and an LED would light up on the control board and um, 
that will continue to do that. Every time it's triggered, it would reset the timer for 30 seconds. Once there's no further motion uh, detected during that walk test, the LED will flash about 10 times, um, and that will let you know that the board is armed and ready to start taking video whenever uh, an animal you know, is detected. So we're going to turn on the uh, toggle switch here to the on position and so the transmitter lit up and now the light has come on and that's going through the warm up just to let you know that the lights are working and then once that completes the light has gone back off and now we're in the walk test mode all right so now if i flip this around i'm going to kind of lay it down here like this if we uh activate to motion on it you can see that really red led light up in this Fresnel lens and that's just letting you know that the board is detecting motion but wouldn't right now we're in walk test okay so if we let this sit for 30 seconds um, without detecting any further motion that LED is going to blink several times um, to let you know that walk test has ended and that the board is now ready and to uh, activate the camera when further motion is detected and it would start taking a video. So I'm going to kind of let this go through and let you see that the LED will blink several times. Alright, so if the walk test has ended, our LED flashed several times there indicating that the walk test has ended. So now if motion is detected, that LED will not light up anymore but the camera will be activated and it will be on taking video and uh, I'm going to show you that we'll just uh, take this little elastic cord and so we can open the back of this little waterproof housing and remove the camera and as you can see that camera is on and recording video at the moment okay or it would be it doesn't have an SD card in it now so it's not uh, actually recording video but um, the camera is on now it will stay on for the prescribed amount of time that you have the dip switches set for whether it's one minute or video or a 30 second video and once that is ended then the camera will be powered back off so I'm gonna try to let uh, this stay running and see that the camera does get powered back off I believe I have this set for one minute videos. Yep, so the camera has now powered off. So if we'd had an SD card in the camera, it would have recorded uh, approximately uh, a little over a minute of video. Each camera is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to turn the control board back off now. Um, but even though the program is set for uh, approximately one minute, each camera is a little in, little individual, so you'll get uh, you know a few more seconds or a few less seconds uh, of video depending on the camera itself. All right. And like I said, whenever you're gonna, uh, whenever you need to change batteries in your camera, you would uh, just simply take it out of the little case and squeeze the top and the bottom of this black housing for the bus port connector and that will allow you to disengage it and remove that from the camera so you can uh, access your battery door uh, to change your battery inside the camera. Once you uh, replace the battery then reconnect the bus port connector and it will only go in one direction so don't try to force it if it doesn't feel like it's going down in there you know flip it around the other direction uh, and right now it is actually wrong so turn it back around and it will just clip back into place then you can set your camera back into the little housing close the door and then uh, reattach the little elastic that would hold the uh, door closed so that's basically it uh, oh on the uh, transmitter and on the receiver you can uh, change dip switch settings on those as well so uh, if you had say two GoPro builds set up in a relatively close uh, area 
and you didn't want all of your lights to come on when just one camera was activated, you could change the dip switch settings. Uh, and to do that, you just uh, pull this up out of there and take the battery cover off of the back. And inside, you'll notice that there's four dip switches and you can set those to uh, any position that you want. And then on your light case, the uh, receiver also has dip switches. You just uh, take the battery door off of it and set the dip switches to match whatever your transmitter is set at. And that way you could have uh, possibly, you know, two GoPro builds set out in the field with two lights per build. And um, if they were close enough, and you only wanted just one camera, or when, this, when one camera is activated, you only need those two lights on instead of all four, then you could set two lights to match the receiver for one camera and two lights to match the receiver and transmitter for the other build. Um, so that's, that's just another option for you, you know, where you can uh, set as many lights to operate on one build or set them to work on just individual camera builds um, however you want to do it. So um, hopefully that gives you kind of a good explanation of how the, these things work. And uh, hope you enjoy them.